my book, Everything That Happens In Between, there's a story called Accidents Happen, which takes place in the fictional town of Centerville, which is based on the real town of Centralia, Pennsylvania, which is where we are right now. Centralia is located in the heart of the anthracite region in Pennsylvania, and in 1962 it was discovered that there was a fire in the mines below the town. By the mid-80s, the town had virtually been relocated. We are standing on what was once uh, the main artery that came through Centralia, the old Route 61 uh, in Pennsylvania. We are in Columbia County, and you can see that the years have pretty much reclaimed Centralia. The story, Accidents Happened, is also based loosely on a real murder that happened in the town of Centralia in the late 1950s. Uh, Accidents Happened is a, a fictionalized account, and I took many liberties while writing it. But this, uh, that and my roots, my ties to Centralia, were really the genesis behind Accidents Happened. The story begins with the main characters of Mr. Macon and two young boys from Centerville. And the story opens on the old route. The graffiti that you see is actually everything that I was writing about. There is no longer a waist-deep toxic broom, but at one time the road's closure was because of the exhaust from the mine fire. In this story, old Mr. Macon leads the boys on a path through the woods, and they discuss the murder of the fictional Anne Marie Burke. The boys and Mr. Macon come through the woods and come to the spot where Anne Marie Burke's body was buried, right behind the old church, which I believe in the story I called St. Cobes. The piece of ground I'm now standing on used to be the St. Ignatius Catholic Church, which is the church that uh, my parents were wed in, actually, and the church that my mom grew up in. In the story, the boys and Mr. Macon pass through the old church a lot on their way to find Anne Marie Burke. I'm standing in front of the Russian Orthodox Church, which is on the other side of town from where we had shot the other footage. Now, this isn't the St. Ignatius or the fictitious St. Pope in the book. However, when I was writing the church and thinking about it, this was the image. This kind of Gothic image is the one that I had in my mind to kind of, you know, put uh, the emphasis on something really terrible has happened and is going to happen again in the town of Centerville. In the book, when the boys and Mr. Macon are searching for Anne Marie's grave, he mentions that it was buried in the unhallowed ground because the hallowed ground would not accept her. The boys are sitting on a stone wall as Mr. Macon tells the story. This is the location that I had in mind. This is actually the Russian Orthodox Cemetery that we are standing in front of, but this wall was really the catalyst behind me riding the scene, the idea of Anne Marie being buried on the other side of the ground, which is not consecrated. I'm walking behind the Oddfellow Cemetery right now, which is also mentioned in the book. In the fictitious layout of Centerville, this would have been part of the way that Mr. Macon and the boys would have been walking when they were looking for Anne Marie's grave. This stack you see standing behind me was placed here in the 1980s by Reading Anthracite in an attempt to aerate the mine fire. At one time, these pipes were mad hot and were constantly billowing toxic exhaust from the fire. We're just north of the Oddfellow Cemetery and the stacks are also mentioned on the journey that Mr. Macon and the boys are taking on their way to the unhallowed ground. We're in the part of Centralia now that was known to the locals as the swamp. If you lived in the swamp, you were known as a swamper. When I mentioned the swamp in the story, this is actually the location I was thinking of. Now you can see by this street, and by the way everything's growing in, that Centralia is indeed now a ghost town. I think that there may be actually six residents left living in the real town of Centralia. We're still in the swamp of Centralia. But in the story, Accidents Happened, this is where I envisioned the fictional home of Cleona and Anne-Marie Burke. If they had really resided in the swamp, this is what would be left of their home today. See behind me here is an old cold shaker that was used to break up the anthracite that was used to heat many of the homes in the real Centralia, Pennsylvania. We're standing right off of Trout Wayne Street in Centralia, Pennsylvania. You can see behind me is the foundation of what was once a home. 
the home that actually stood on this lot was the home of my my grandparents and the home of my mother. Uh, my mother's maiden name was Klimchak, which is where I took my riding name from. The reason we're at this location is because one of the reoccurring symbols or more motifs in the book is a black walnut tree. And I got the idea for the black walnut tree because right in this backyard, in that direction, there was once a big, beautiful, hardy black walnut tree. I can remember being young in the yard with the cousins, throwing the, the green walnuts at each other that used to fall from the tree. What I found out when I did a little bit of research on the black walnut is that in spite of it being a very hardy tree, it's also very poisonous to the plant life surrounding it. And I thought that was a great metaphor for some of the themes of deviation and the effects of blazing your own trail at the expense of others. All right, this guy here who's making the film for me, he doesn't know this yet, but in the story, Mr. Macon, the man who had his jaw shattered years previous in a mining accident. Me? It wasn't a mining accident, but you you were, actually you were the, the physicality of Mr. Macon. Nice. Look at the face, how could you not write about it? <laughs>